Well, hello and welcome back to Noah's Window. You know, Mark, yesterday we were talking about waiting patiently on God. Yes. And we were reading through Isaiah this morning, and there's almost like a, a flip side to that because in Isaiah, um, God says he's waiting on us. So um, I hope you'll get your Bible and just dig into this on your own. It's in Isaiah chapter 30, and there's a lot here. There's, there's a lot before, a lot after, so I hope you'll go grab it and read the whole context. But he's talking to the, to the Israelites, to the mm-hmm. Jews, and he's uh, talking about a situation where instead of coming to him, they go to their, they try to make alliances with ungodly people. Yeah, specifically guess, Egypt, Egypt in this case, you know, and it's going to backfire on them. And Egypt is always a type of, of sin in the Bible, yeah. too. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it's, it's a type of the world. Uh, right. Thank you. So it's it's not the it's not the ally that you would should go after. Besides the fact there's no ally that you should go after before you go to the Lord and mm-hmm. he directs you. So that's kind of the context here. But I'm going to jump in at verse 15. And it says, this is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. Only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. And quietness and confidence is your strength, but you would have none of it. Um, which we talked about that a little bit this morning about how we tend to get in a panic. And I'm sure well, that's the biggest mistakes I've made in my life was when I got frantic. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and you know, it's hard for me to work with someone who's frantic. You know, it's when something is difficult, some kind of scary situation. And, and you hear people say this. Well, I've got to do something. Got to do something. I got to do something. It's desperation. And if, yeah, and if they don't know what to do, then whatever they're going to do is going to be wrong. Yeah. And so, you know, the Bible says, "In quietness, right. you know, you'll in find your strength." Yeah. And interestingly, Jesus quotes that in the Gospel of Luke. Wow, that's wonderful. So I'm going to jump down to verse 18, and again, this is saying this is still God talking, and here He says, "So the Lord must wait for you to come to Him, so He can show you His love and compassion." For the Lord is a faithful God. Blessed are those who wait for his help. So there, we're waiting for his help. But the Lord must wait for you to come to him. And what he's going to do when you come to him, he's going to show you his love and compassion. I love that. Well, there's two things that jump off the page to me and, and did so when you read that to me, especially in the context of what we looked at yesterday. Because we said we wait when there's value. Mm-hmm. You know, We said if something has no value, then there's no sense in waiting. But the longer we wait tends to reveal how much we value whatever it is we're waiting for and how much we're depending upon that. And so yesterday, we, like you said, we talked about waiting on God and we wait on God because His help is so valuable. I think it's beautiful that God waits on us because mm-hmm. He must value us to wait on us, mm-hmm. you know, because he, he certainly doesn't have to wait on us. I mean, He should expect immediate response from us but when we don't he's still patient and he waits for us he waits for us so that he can answer i you know to me the 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 picture i get in my mind is here's the god of the universe Mm -hmm. who's holding everything together and has so many things to be concerned about but he's waiting for us to come to him so that he can show us love and compassion wow how can i not how can i not go to him the second thing that i draw from that is kind of a, a wake-up call because what the Lord is saying it is here, while you're frantically going after other means of help, I'm going to wait for you quietly until you recognize that I'm the only one who can help you. And, mm-hmm. and like you pointed out a little while ago, Egypt is always a, a picture of the world. And, and so many times God's people depend on worldly resources when the first place we should go for help is God. But I notice here that when God waits for us, He doesn't rush in and say, well, you're going to Egypt, but I'll come help you anyway. I think there are times when God waits for us to exhaust our uh, our other resources before you know we come to Him, and and, and you know here's what we say. Here, here's how what we say in a practical basis. We say, well, I guess all we can do now is pray. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the most we could wow. ever do, and we mm-hmm. should start there. Right, because the Lord start. is waiting. Yes, He's <laughs> the Lord is waiting for us to, to figure him. that out. Yes, yes, <laughs> and I think if you read on further in this chapter. Uh, and, and won't go into that because there's so much richness there. But there's a time where he says, then you'll eventually you'll figure it out. And you'll throw all those things away, and you'll realize how worthless they are. Well, I've got to raise my hand on that one because mm-hmm. there have been situations in my life where I tried all kinds of things that were within my own resources, and then finally, when I hit the blank wall, then I would turn to God, and God would help me and you know answer my prayers. I, I just want to bring up one point here because you and I've had this conversation so many times in this modern day. 
obviously we're not making an alliance with Egypt, we're not after their horses and all that, but as you said so many times, I think the one power base that our culture leans on heavily right now is technology. And yeah. I do see a, a generation that really does believe technology can solve all their problems. It's true, and, and I do think that is that is the biggest Egypt, if you will. And I, I love the way you made that comparison because I think that's spot on. But really, it could be, okay, it's anything that we depend on if God is second yes. or third or down the list. Yes. So Egypt is anything that we go to first before we go to God. But don't you think technology is Oh my that, goodness. Even in the Christian question. community, we have such value. And, and, and obviously, technology can be used to spread the gospel. So mm -hmm. not, I'm not saying that it's evil within itself. No, I, I know what you're saying because we, we, we've become conditioned. We've become groomed to believe that there's an app for everything. There's a program it for everything. It solves our problems. And it solves our problem instantly. Yes. And I think yes. because technology is so instant in so many cases, um, you know, I think people depend on it. We're already beginning to see fraying on the edges. I mean, you and I can remember when we could pick up a magazine article, we could pick up a newspaper article, and it would be carefully written and every word would be spelled carefully. It would be rare to ever see a, a, you a know, typo. Yeah, yeah, a typo. Well, almost every article, major publications have typos. Now that's a that's a small application, but I think we're beginning to see the fraying of the edges of a culture that depends on technology. Mm -hmm. Well, how much worse is it for God's people to just depend on technology when we need to go to God first. I mean, there's nothing wrong with utilizing it, mm -hmm. but God needs to be first. He's our first. And, and, and I love what this verse is saying. God will wait on us until we figure it out. We're not going to get love and compassion from technology. No, that's for that. sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. So I think there's a lot here for us to chew on today. Oh and my. to remember whatever yeah. it is we're facing, He's waiting for us to come to Him so that he can show us love and compassion. And I don't know about you, that's really encouraged my heart today. And I want to remember that as I'm starting my day um, to make a priority to talk to the Lord first thing because I always have things that I need to bring to him and talk to him about. And uh, and I'm glad he's careful to listen. You know, Mariel, this is not where we started out today, but aren't we thankful that God was patient on us until we came yes. to know Jesus? I mean, yes. His, his waiting patiently on us waiting on us through many bad bad paths. Well, and, and not to digress too much here, but he's already sent his prophets, he's sent warnings, he's sent, he's given them instructions and they disregarded all these things. You know, I love how the NLT says, I, I, I offer all these things, but you would have none of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you've dismissed me. Yeah. You've dismissed me. So it's not like he's been hiding and waiting. He's made himself clear. That's a good point. You know, but because they have dismissed him, he's going to wait. We, we've often said, you know, when we, in our country, we dismiss God. We, we send him out. We expel him. And so God is a gentleman. He's not going to insert himself. He's going to wait till we invite him back in. That's such so, a powerful thought. Yes. Yeah, so I hope that encourages you today as you're beginning your day. And on that note, Mark, would you lead us yes. in a word of prayer? Our Father and God, we come before you today asking uh, for your help, recognizing that you're who we come to first. And Lord, I pray that you will convict our hearts when we get frantic and we begin to try to do things in our own strength without asking for your help. Help us to, help us to get a vision of you in heaven waiting on us to figure out the importance of coming to you and how that you offer help and deliverance and restoration. Lord, help us to go to you first. We thank you for your kindness. Thank you for how you value us to wait on us. How wonderful you are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mark. And thank you for joining us here on in our deck. It's nice to have the weather where we can sit outside oh boy, a little bit. Yeah. But we love you guys and we'll look forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. That's right. We'll see you soon. God bless.